Today we're going to learn how to install packages to Emacs through Melpa, the package manager. And if Melpa's not available, we're going to learn how to do it manually. So strap on your seatbelt and get ready for a ride. And it would be so wonderful if you subscribed to my channel. You don't use Emacs just to use the default. The entire benefit of using Emacs is to be able to customize it with packages. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. And you can really speed up your workflow by using some of these custom packages. They're really cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into Dired and we'll go into our home directory. So in my case, it's users slash John Curry. That's my home directory. And I did not. Anyway, so uh, we have two full, well, one file and one folder that is really important to configuring uh, Emacs. And so that is the .emacs.d folder, and then also the .emacs file. And so if you don't have those, you can go ahead and create them. So I don't have the .emacs file, so I'm going to go ahead and create that. So cx, cf, and .emacs, again, inside your home directory. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And so the, the uh, I forgot to tell you what they are. So the .emacs file is the configuration file. So every sort of configuration setting is going to go in the .emacs file. And the .emacs.d is where all of the packages that are installed on uh, for Emacs are going to go. So if you install something, it's going to be put into .emacs.d, whether you do it or the package manager does it for you. Okay, so there are two, well, at least two ways to install packages in Emacs or customize Emacs. There are the package managers like Melpa, and then there's also doing it yourself. If the package is not available in Melpa, you may have to install it yourself. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to cover Melpa first because most of uh, the good packages are in Melpa. So what you'll want to do is you want to head over to melpa.org and then click on the Getting Started section. And I do recommend reading through this information because it will give you some you know, helpful information. But I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this information here to get started with Melpa. So we'll copy that and we're going to put that code into our .emacs file. So we've got uh, require packages and basically requiring the package manager Melpa. And another thing that you can do, I'm not sure if I did this correctly. Honestly, I don't quite understand the documentation here, but it says if you want to use the Melpa stable rather than just Melpa, you um, do this, which doesn't make sense to me, but Melpa hyphen stable. So if we go in here and instead of using Melpa, use Melpa stable. I think that is correct and it seems to be working. So I'm going to give that a try. Otherwise, you can just leave it how it is, but control X, control S for save. So we saved this .emacs file. And now we can go ahead and close out of Emacs and restart it. So control X, control C to close it. And then open up Emacs again. And there's no error, so we are good to go uh, with the uh, using Melpa to install packages. And so to get to the list of packages, you can do um, meta X instead of control X, but it's like alt X it should show up. You'll know you did it right because there'll be an M hyphen X and then you can type in package hyphen list hyphen packages, packages. That will open up Mel Melpa's repository of packages. And so we can install, you know, whatever we want in here. So we can take a look at all these different packages. There's tons of packages. So let's go ahead and do a search, and I'm going to install a theme. So control S for search, and I type in Monokai, and now I just gotta find it. So CS again, and 
here it is. So I've got my cursor over it, and if you want to install the package, uh, uh, you type in I, and then you can select several different packages that you want. You can install multiple at a time, but when you're ready to install, you press X. So I to select the package, and then X to install it. So install package, you type Y for S, it will contact Melpa and install the package. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our diode again. And we'll take a look at our .emacs and our .emacs.d. So again, .emacs.d is where all of the uh, packages get downloaded to. So Elpa is the package manager, and we can see this Monokai hyphen theme was installed here. So here's the source code for our Monokai theme. So we can take a look at all of the uh, code that we have, but we don't need to adjust any of that, so I'm just showing you that that's where it's at. And so inside of Elpa, you'll see all of the packages that have been installed by Melpa. And then let's go ahead and take a look at our .emacs file. And we can see a bunch of code has been added. And we've got here, uh, these. this is here is the list of all of the stuff installed by uh, Melpa. So right now we just have Monokai theme. So let's go ahead and close out of Emacs, start it up again, and you'll notice nothing has happened. And that's because you have to uh, set up the Emacs to use that theme by default. So let's go ahead and go to our .emacs file. And we just have to set up a configuration for it. So if you take a look, at the Monokai hyphen Emacs package. I don't, it should be called Monokai theme, or, but whatever, it doesn't match exactly. But uh, if you see here, you can see to load it automatically on Emacs startup, add this to your init file. And so it just says load theme Monokai T. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll put it into our uh, Emacs configuration file. And then we'll save that. And then, and also, I'm sorry, I got this by just Googling Monokai Emacs, and then that this is the same package that's available in Melpa. So um, that's how I figured that out. But anyway, so once this has been saved, we can close out of it again, and we'll start Emacs one more time. And now we can see our fancy new theme has been installed. So that's how you install packages with Melpa. And so to uninstall a package, because you may decide to test out a package and decide you don't like it, so you want to uninstall packages sometimes. And to properly uninstall a package, you can go back to the package list packages. So Alt X, package list packages. And then you'll want to search for the package that you installed. And you can either just do an I search with CS and then type in the package you're looking for and just until you find it. Uh, or you can scroll to the bottom. So if you scroll to the bottom, there's a list of installed packages. You can see how it says installed here. So once you have the package that you want to, to uninstall, you put your cursor over it, press D and then X and then Y and that will delete it or uninstall it from your system. So let's go ahead and go back to Dired now, and we'll check out our .emacs.d, and you can see that all of a sudden the Monokai theme source code is gone. It's no longer in the Alpha folder, and that's because it deleted it. And then if you go to your .emacs, unfortunately it still stays here, uh, the Monokai hyphen theme, so I think the proper way is just to delete it. I wish it would do it automatically because, you know, the comment makes it seem like it would um, take care of that for you, but whatever. Just go ahead and get rid of that and save. Be careful not to delete any parentheses or anything. And we'll go ahead and close out of Emacs and then open it again. Oh, and we have an error because I keep forgetting to do that. Um, in our .emacs file, we have some configuration 
which is load hyphen theme monokai. So let's go ahead and get rid of that as well. So we'll do that and then save and then get rid of it and we'll start up Emacs again. And that's how we both install and uninstall packages via Melpa. So that's uh, how you do that. Sometimes you can't always use Melpa to download a, um, a package because it, for whatever reason it's not available there. So you can still download uh, and do it yourself manually. So we'll show you how to do that here. So we'll do the Monokai Emacs theme again. So basically what you want to do is grab the URL or the download folder and oops. Okay, so in our emacs.d folder, we'll want to clone the repository for the source code of the package. So I'm going to do git clone inside the emacs.d for monokai emacs. Okay, and then we check what is inside, and we have monokai-emacs. So now we just need to point to this code in our .emacs file. So if we go to our .emacs file and we go down to the bottom, we can add that code here. And we will add to list the custom theme load path or the, the load path for the package. And so we'll have to do a little bit of changing to make it match, but let's go ahead and do that. So add to list custom theme load path and so what is the path? So this goes to our home directory, our .emacs.d, and then instead of themes, we have monokai-emacs inside of our emacs.d. So in this case, or in my case, we'll want to change it to monokai-emacs. And then change into monokai-emacs just to see what's in here. And we've got this monokai-theme.el. So that should work. And then we'll also want to make sure we start it up on um, the startup of Emacs. So we'll add this back to the file. So this will add the directory where the source code lies and then we'll start it up. So we'll go ahead and save that. And oh, let's go ahead and quit Emacs and then start it up again. And there it is. And so if you want to delete it, all you have to do is delete the directory of um, the source code and delete all of the calls to that code inside your configuration file. So that's basically how you set up uh, Emacs. And I hope this is enough information to get you working and actually being able to get stuff done in Emacs. Hey, all you techno geeks, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Please give the video a like, leave a comment letting me know what you thought, and subscribe to the channel, and visit my website, truthseekers.io, where I'm trying to build a community of programmers and tech enthusiasts. I've got all sorts of stuff like learning to code challenges, tutorials on teaching you how to code, and a bunch of other stuff. So check it out and see what uh, what's there, what's cooking over there. So have fun, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.